Hi guys and welcome back to a new video. In today's video I will go through what are in my opinion the best ways to make some gold currently in Dragonflight. I will start with the best ones and I will go till the least best ones and each time I will really try to explain how you can make all these different things as efficiently as possible in order to make some gold right now in Dragonflight. So let's start with the first category of items and all these different items are going to be the crafted consumables that you can craft with some of the main professions. Some of these items that I really think are the most interesting ones are going to be from alchemy and enchanting. So for instance, with enchanting, you are able to craft a lot of different enchants and there are some of them that can really be sold for a lot of gold. As you can see, all the different devotions are really good and when you are able to craft them in the highest quality, you will most likely be able to make a lot of gold. Keep in mind that what makes these items so interesting is the fact that they are region-wide, meaning that when you sell them, you sell them to everyone on your region. So usually they sell very fast and like that, you are able to make millions. I know people who have been able to make millions and millions with all these different enchants and this is still something that is profitable right now. Next to that, you of course have, for instance, all the different fields from Alchemy. All of these items are again very good and will sell super fast. So all you want to do is make sure to be able to craft them in the highest quality. So in order for you to craft them in the highest quality, most of the time I would encourage you to try and focus on having all your different knowledge points spent on increasing your inspiration with these different professions. Also, of course, sometimes you will have to unlock specific uh, like recipes and plants through the different subspecializations. So this is also something to keep in mind, but really having the inspiration maxed up and then trying to also have some points in resourcefulness and in multi-craft is going to be very, very good for all these different crafted consumables. So with these items, you can make millions and this is still something that is worth investing some time and gold right now. After that, at number two, we're going to have all the different recipes, plants, and patterns that you can farm and that you can then sell on the auction house. So we have a lot of these different plants and patterns that are available in Dragonflight. And what's so interesting is that, again, you can farm them and then sell them directly on the auction house. So you have a lot of really good examples of these different plants and recipes. For instance, the design of the Elemental Laria. Some people were able to sell it for almost a gold cap a few weeks ago and still now people are able to sell it for more than 1 million on most realms. You have for instance the plants for the Black Dragon Touch Hammer. I talked about it in another video. As you can see I sold three of them on my low pop realm for 160k gold each. And you have a lot of these other plants and patterns and all of them can really be super interesting. So you have a few main sources in order to farm all these different plants and patterns. The first one is of course going to be the new raid. So with the new raid, you can really get a lot of these different plans, patterns and designs and all these different items can be worth a lot of gold on the auction house. Then of course you have all the different rares that you can kill in the different zones of uh, the dragon house. So for instance, this one, the plants, the black dragon touch hammer, uh, it drops from one of the rares that you can kill in the waking shore and this is something that you can do every day so this is the type of things you can do and make a lot of gold with just by farming and selling all these different recipes then of course you have for instance a different events that can reward you with some very interesting plants and recipes for instance the elemental storms where you can get the design for the elemental area and even when fishing, you can get a lot of these different recipes in the bottle and then you can get a lot of these other uh, plants that you can again sell on the ocean house. Before that and before the release of season one, all the PvP plants and patterns were also very, very interesting and very expensive. But with the release of the arenas, uh, a lot of people are now able to get them and so on many realms, they're not really worth a lot anymore. But still, for a long period of time, you were able to make a lot of gold if you were able to get some of these uh, plants and recipes. So this is really something that I think has been a great surprise so far in Dragonflight. And I cannot wait to see what Blizzard will add in the next patches in terms of plants and recipes and 
if we will be able to make a lot of gold again with all these different items. Then at number three, we're gonna have all the different open world farms. So all these different open world farms are very diverse and you can get many different types of items when doing them. For instance, if you go here in Taldrasus in Tear Old, you will be able to farm some of these orbs that can be then sold for quite a lot of gold. You can of course also try to farm all the different awakened materials and then you have like all the different cloth and all these other items that can be worth a lot of gold on the auction house. But in order for you to actually make it as profitable as possible, you need to do two things because otherwise this is definitely not something that will be at number three on this list. So for you to make it really profitable, you want to try and have your character having both enchanting and tailoring. Because like that, you will be able to get even more items that you can then sell on the auction house. So with tailoring, you want to maximize the cloth collection uh, build. Because like that, you will be able to get some additional winter cloth and also sometimes some uh, winter cloth bolts just when killing, for instance, humanoids. So... This is really something that is going to be important and like that you will be able to get even more cloth and to sell even more of these on the auction house. Then with enchanting you want to choose inside of the blue and then you want to put a lot of points into this build because like that you will be able basically to find some mystic items and these mystic items can then be disenchanted into some of the enchanting materials that you can sell for quite a lot of gold on the auction house. So try to maximize that. And like that, really, you will be able to make all these open world farms as profitable as possible. Unfortunately, right now, there are no world BOEs that are available. But still, with these new builds and with these new sub specializations, you are really able to make a huge amount of gold just by killing a bunch of mobs. And so this is why I'm going to put at number three, because this is always something that is pretty good and probably it will remain good throughout the expansion because of these different talents. At number four, we're gonna have level boosting. And this is something that will work mostly in the Cobalt Assembly in the Azerstan. So this area is very interesting because basically when you kill all these different edit mobs and when you are level 68 or more, you will be able to drop some items and to use them and get some specific powers that you can use in order to then become almost a world boss. And like that, you can really kill all these different mobs very, very easily. So then all you want to do is group four people, even when they're level 60 or even less than that. All they want to do is come here and really just sit where I'm right now, just on this wing of this uh, statue. And then you just want to kill all the different mobs around and like that they will get all the different XP. So this is something that you can do very easily and it will work really well if you're on a hyper plum because you can advertise and get a lot of people who would be interested in doing these different level boosts. So of course this is a technique that works only if you have a lot of people who are interested in doing these different boosts. And again this is only something you can do with the people from your realm because otherwise they won't be able to actually trade you the money. So you need to do it with people who will be able to actually trade you some money. Otherwise, you won't really be able to get anything from all the people you're boosting. So this is a really interesting way of getting some gold. And currently, for some people, it has been working pretty well. And I know some people who have been able to make quite a lot of uh, millions of gold just by boosting people in the Cobalt Assembly. After that, at number five, we're going to have all the different illusions that you can craft with enchanting. So all these different illusions are very interesting because unlike the ones from previous expansions where basically you could craft one item and they would grant you three different illusions, here we have one item per illusion. So it means that you can in total craft and sell on the auction house five different illusions, which is really, really good. So in order to get the four blue ones, it's pretty simple. All you want to do is get a level 70, an enchanter and then you want to do some of these elemental storms in order to kill the different rares and these rares have a chance at getting at dropping the different designs so for each of this type of uh, elemental storms so if you have the fire the frost the air and the earth ones you will have one rare dragon and when killing this rare dragon you will have a chance at getting the design so again you can only get these different designs when killing these rare dragons from each of the elemental storms. And you can do that once per day. 
on your enchanters. So this is really something that I would recommend you to do if you have an enchanter, because if you get your hands on some of these designs, you can then probably make a lot of gold just by crafting and selling all these different illusions. And what's really good is that these different illusions that don't require a lot of knowledge points in order for you to craft them efficiently. All you want to do is reach 50 in enchanting and then you will be able to craft them. And as you can see, the only thing you can really add in order to make it as efficient as possible is the resourcefulness. And so over in that, really, it's very simple. So it doesn't require a lot of effort on this side. Then for the final one, the Primal Mastery, which is probably like the best one. For this one, you want to go in the new raid, the Vault of the Incarnates. And here you want to kill Kurog Grim Totem. So Kuro Grim Totem will have a chance at dropping uh, the design for uh, the formula for this uh, illusion, but it's very, very rare. So maybe the best way for you to get it is to actually buy it from the Ocean House, because unlike the ones that you get from the Elemental Storms, this one is BOE, and so you can buy it and sell it on the Ocean House. So it might maybe be the best way for you to get your hands on this uh, uh, formula. And so as you can see, I've personally been able to make quite a lot of gold with these different illusions, especially the one for mastery. And this is something that I'm sure you can also make quite a lot of gold if you get your hands on one of these items. Then at number six, we're going to have all the different crafted PVP items that you can then sell on the auction house. So these items are green quality. And what's interesting with these items is that for most of them, they have the highest, like, eye level you can actually get from the auction house. And also, they will increase the eye level when you're doing PvP to 398. So this is really something a lot of people are using in order to start doing a lot of PvP. And this is something that sells extremely, extremely well. So all these different items are interesting, but there are three different categories that are especially interesting. The first one, of course, are going to be all the ones you can craft with jewel crafting. So it uh, includes the amulet, the necklace, and the rings. So these ones are really, really good. As you can see, for instance, the ring, I sold 126 for almost a million gold on my low pop realm. And uh, I sold also a lot of these different amulets. Um, so really, these ones are extremely good. Then with tailoring, of course, you will have the clock. So the clock is also really, really good. And this one... You will make a lot of gold if you are able to craft it. And then finally, you also have the trinkets that you can craft with inscriptions. So these ones are pretty new and they also sell for a lot of gold. So these are really the main items you want to have with you on the Ocean House. But of course, all the rest of the different armors are also really interesting. And so I would definitely encourage you to try and craft some of these. Of course, keep in mind that now that we're pretty much advanced in the first season and in Dragon Fights, of course, the value has decreased for many of these items, especially on high pop realms. But I'm sure that on many realms, you are still able to make some decent profit with these items. And I'm sure that you will be able to just continue making some profit even after the end of this season. And as you can see, really on my side, I've been able to sell a lot of these. And this is really something I'm planning on continue doing because it has been one of the best ways for me to make some gold very easily so far in season one. Then after that, at number seven, we're going to have the famous elemental Laria. So actually crafting this item can really make you rich, especially if you're playing on a high pop realm where there is a lot of people who are willing to spend quite a lot of gold in order to get your, their hands on this necklace. So through the crafting order system, you are able to actually craft and make some gold with this necklace. And for many people, it has been a huge gold mine. I'm only putting it at number seven because even though some people have made millions and millions just crafting this item with all the different commissions, it's still something that requires you first to get the recipe, which is pretty difficult to farm or pretty expensive to buy. And then you will have to go through all the different complexities of the crafting order system in order to start making some gold with them. The first thing, of course, is having enough skill points and everything and inspiration in order to make it uh, to the rank 5, because otherwise people won't really be interested in getting your uh, craft. They will try to find someone else. Then you need to always explain to everyone how everything works, and it really takes a lot of time. So this is something important to mention, because unfortunately, 
For many people, the crafting order system is not clear at all. And so you will have most of the time to explain for 10 minutes what people need to do in order for them to start uh, or like making the order and then for you to start crafting the item. And then, of course, when it comes to the different public ones, you have a lot of competition. And so some people are ready to craft the item for sometimes not even like a couple of thousands of gold of commission. And so it really makes it difficult, especially, for instance, like on no pop realms, uh, sometimes to make a lot of gold simply because you have too much competition with people who are offering prices that are very, very, very cheap. And so you might not make that's much cool. But again, I know that for some people it has been a huge gold mine and so I'm still going to include it in this list and I still think this is something that you can make a lot of gold on any type of realm just depending on oh, no. Now at number 8 we're going to have mining and herbalism. So these two gathering professions can be pretty interesting especially because you can get when doing these two professions some of the different awaken order. So this is really the main thing you should focus on when doing gathering and mining. And this is really the item that you're going to make the most gold with. So in order to get this different awakened order, you need to have some of the different uh, rosing order. And these items will drop when you can find some titan touched uh, like herbs or different ore. And so this is something that you will most likely have to do here in Taldrosus, maybe for instance around tier old, and then you have different uh, locations also in the other span where you can get some of these herbs and ores and where you can try to get some of these awakened orders. So next to that, of course, you have a couple of things you can do in order to get some interesting items. For instance, with mining, you can try to get the subspecialization in order to get some of these eliminated diamonds. But really, over than that, I would say that uh, both herbalism and mining are not the greatest professions. It's really just if you want to get some of these a uh, rosing order that you might want to try to do that. And like that, you will always make some gold because these items are always pretty expensive and they've been selling like super, super fast so far. So when you're doing that, you will always make a steady amount of gold. But I would just say that uh, it's not the greatest farm you can do right now in Dragonflight. Then at number nine, I'm going to add all the different battle pets that you can craft with the different professions. So these items are very interesting because most of them are locked behind some of the recipes that you can get either when upgrading some of the reputations or when getting some very rare patterns. And therefore, there are not so many people who are crafting them. And like that, it means that you are able sometimes to sell them for a huge amount of gold. Also, what's really good with all these different pets is the fact that you can craft them and then learn them and then cage them on other realms. So it's a really good way for you to make some gold, not only on your main realm, but also on many other realms. I've personally made a lot of gold, for instance, with Alvin the Anvil and also with some of the jeweled whelpings. So this is really something, especially again, if you want to try and make some gold on multiple realms that will work really well. And like that, you will most likely be able to make millions of gold. Because keep in mind, most of these pets sell on most realms for more than like 150 to 200k gold each. So this is really something that can be super profitable if you're doing it on multiple realms at the same time. And at number 10, we're going to have BOE farming. So all these different BOEs drop from the new raid. And some of these items can really be sold for a lot of gold. I'm only putting this one at number 10 because while you are able to make millions of gold just selling some of these BOEs, these have been pretty difficult to get. And so right now it's probably like, like a lot of time. Uh, so it's very time consuming for you to get some of these BOEs. And also for now, we still don't have access to the mythic BOEs. So all the different mythic BOEs are for now binds when picked up. And so they haven't been added yet to the auction house. But as soon as these different mythic BOEs will be added to uh, the game, you should definitely try to farm some and probably it will become one of the best ways to make some gold. So right now I'm only putting it at number 10 because while again you can make some gold, it's pretty difficult to get your hands on these different BOEs and also they are not the mythic BOEs available. But again, this is a cool activity you can do. And this is something that can always reward you with some gold if you get some of the BOEs. Just as a quick recap, in order for you to do all these different 
uh, farms, all you want to do is go in the pre-made group and you want to go in the like rates and you want to type BOE or just farm. And then what normally you will have to do is kill the first boss, Eranog, and then you will be able to farm all these different BOEs by killing all the different trash before these different bosses. At number 11, we're going to have flipping. Flipping is a little bit more difficult than in the previous expansions because we don't have the world BOEs, we don't have some of the crafted BOEs you can craft with all the different professions, but you can still find some pretty interesting items that you can flip in order to then make a profit. Some of these items include some of the different recipes. These items are always good to keep in mind because a lot of people don't know the rarity or the value of some of these recipes and plants and they will post them for a very cheap price and you can snipe them and then sell them back for a huge amount of gold as you can see here but this one for 85,000 gold sold it back for 160 and this is really a category of items that is very interesting because you have a lot of these different uh, plants and recipes so this is definitely in my opinion the best category you should have a look at then of course you have all the different uh, BOEs from the raid so these BOEs are always good because again some people sometimes might just get them and they want some quick gold and so they will try to sell them for a very cheap price but these are always a little bit more risky because sometimes they can be a little bit expensive and so you might risk to like lose a little bit of gold when investing in them but it's still a good category to keep in mind especially when the mythic ones will be available and then one category of items that I find very interesting but very, very risky are all the different materials and uh, consumables that you can craft with the different professions. So here, this is really something that I would only recommend you to do if you have a lot of gold. But if sometimes you are able to, like for instance, reset an entire market, you might be able to then make a lot of gold. So for instance, I take as an example all the different awakened materials or some of the crafted consumables. If at some point you see that it's easy to reset the entire market, try and maybe you end up making millions of gold. Because for instance here, if I try to reset this market right now, as you can see, I'll have to probably expand a couple of like 10 million gold, something like that. But then I can probably try to resell everything for at least 5 million gold profit. But these are very, very risky. And so I would only encourage you to do it if you have a lot of gold and if you're ready to take the risk of losing some gold at the same time. But overall flipping for me has been pretty good. As you can see, uh, I flipped most of these items and I've been able to make quite a lot of gold. And again, this is something that you should only consider when you have enough gold and you understand the market better like or good enough in order for you to not risk to lose all your gold. Then at number 12, we're going to have all the different crafting orders. So the crafting order system for me has not been successful so far. And over than, for instance, the elemental area or maybe like a few other items, most of the different items you can craft with all the different professions are not very profitable. And unfortunately, you won't be able to make a lot of gold. Again, maybe on Hypop Realms, it's a little bit different. But still, from what I've seen and what I've heard, it's still not the best uh, system so far and you will make way, way more gold by, for instance, crafting all the different uh, commodities, all the different ancients and BLs or by doing open world farms or things like that. So I'm still going to mention it because if you are able to maximize your profession and become a master crafter, you might sometimes be able to find some people who are willing to pay quite a lot in order to get the best items. But most of the time, unfortunately, you won't really find that. and as everyone wants to get some new skill points, they will be ready to also craft everything for a very cheap price and so the competition is not helping. So for these reasons, I'm only putting it there in this list. Also, I forgot to add to the list the different Darkmoon decks. So this is something you can make some gold pretty easily and no one needs any professions to actually make some gold with these different Darkmoon decks. 
All you want to do is check the value of the different decks on your realm, and then you want to check the value of the different aces. And if you see that the ace is cheaper than the deck, you can then buy the rest of the deck. Most of the cards go for maybe like 200 gold each, and then you just want to build the deck. And like that, you can sell it on the auction house for quite a lot of gold. So it really depends. Also, there's quite a lot of competition, but it could be a good way for you to make some additional gold without needing anything, any professions, and you just need to buy all the different materials from the auction house. And keep in mind, all these different aces and all these cards are region wide, so it's going to be the same for everyone. So the only thing that matters for you is to check the value of the deck on your realm. And now we're gonna have boosting. So boosting is always something I add into these different lists of best ways to make some gold because this is usually one of the best ways to make some gold. I'm only putting it there in this list because it's very difficult to actually do it. Uh, whether you want to boost Mythic Plus or the different raids or PvP, usually you will need to have a lot of skill in the game and also to be well organized with other people in order to offer this type of services. But once you've achieved this level of organization, usually you can really make a lot of gold. And right now with the release of season one, this is by far one of the best activity you can do if you're able to do these different boosts in order to make some gold. And this is always something that I know people are able to make millions of gold just by doing it for a few hours a day. Then I'm going to also add all the different white and gray quality items because these items will soon in patch 10.0.5 be added into the transmog system. And so you might be able to make a lot of gold just by starting to farm some of them and then by selling them uh, when they will be added to the transmog system. So this is something you can do in advance in order to then be prepared and make a lot of gold at the launch of this new patch. Right now, it's not really going to be the best, but again, this is an investment in the future, and so I would definitely recommend you to do it if you want to be ready and to make a maximum of profit at the launch, the launch of patch 10.0.5. Again, the main items you want to either farm or try to buy from the auction house are all the different rare items that are either removed from the games or that have unique appearances and that are, again, pretty difficult to get, because like that, when you will sell them on the auction house and they will be added to the transport system, people will have to buy yours in order to get this new appearance. So definitely something you want to do. And like that, you will be able to make a lot of gold in patch 10.0.5. And finally, as always, I will add all the different uh, previous expansions farms because these are always interesting. So whether it is farming uh, mounts or maybe farming transport items or crafting some unique items from previous expansions, all these different farms are still relevant even in Dragonflight and you will still be able to make a lot of gold just by doing all these different activities. For instance, right now you still have the Wintervale event that is up and you can still probably try to get your hands on the Minion of Grumpus Mount to make some gold. And you have a lot of other things you can do. So keep that in mind and this is always something you can do if you're a little bit bored with Dragonflight and you just want to diverse, diversify the different farms you're doing and all the different items you're selling on your auction house. Because keep in mind, having a lot of different type of items on your auction house is the best way for you to make a lot of sales. So that's gonna be much it for today's video. I know there are plenty of other things I haven't mentioned, but these are really the like different ways I wanted to highlight in this video. I will be back very soon with more guides and more videos. And in the meantime, I wish you the best of luck with your goal making and goal farming activities. Bye.